I'm talking for these two segments with attorney, author, columnist David Limbaugh. We've talked about um, previous segment, his new book, Jesus on Trial, A Lawyer Affirms the Truth of the Gospel. And as I went out of that segment, I said I wanted to address a couple of current event issues because we continue. I know my listeners and I hear from them all the time. Where in the heck is America going here in the future? And we're just a few weeks off of that November 4th election. And David, as I went out of that uh, segment, I said to you that, and you're aware of this comment, we all are, that a commentator said that America is now heading into the most dangerous time in America, that meaning the coming two years here, perhaps not as dangerous since the Civil War as the next two years in America. Do you agree with that? I don't know who said that and what context he said it, but I will say I don't have to agree with that specifically, or, or at least say that I, I can't be sure about that, to agree with the, the principle, which is we are more polarized and divided than we've ever been. Right. And this president, who has been race conscious and in our face about race, as well as uh, his attorney general, Eric Holder, has caused a great rift and a great amount of suspicion in the black community has exacerbated the tension that exists between police officers and the black community. And we saw that in the Trayvon Martin case, the way Obama handled that, in the Cambridge police officer situation when he defended his friend Henry Gates without benefit of the facts and said that the Cambridge police were acting stupidly. And now this Justice Department has, has egged on this situation in Ferguson, Missouri. And so we have serious problems, but it's not just race. If you see the nastiness of the political left, and you can see it on Twitter, in your emails, in your daily lives, with some of these progressives, and it's this unjustified, the mean situation with them, and they don't believe that they even have to treat us with respect or with, with any kind of common civility, they say it's the other way around. That's not the case. Conservatives don't shut down liberal speech. They don't protest and keep liberals from speaking at, on college campuses. They don't treat them the way liberals treat us. And I see the way that they have compromised the rule of law. They've abused the Constitution. They have taken over. They've divested people of their sovereignty through their liberal appointed activist judges, such as the issues on the issues of abortion and same-sex marriage. They're lucky that we're not like they are. There right. already would have been a civil war yeah. in, in the streets. But we're more restrained and, and more cautious. And our side doesn't just act precipitously like that. But if they keep pushing and if they keep taking away our constitutional rights, I don't know what will happen. I certainly would never advocate any kind of violence. And I'm not sure what your your commentator that you're referring to was talking about, whether it's going to be a civil war in two years. No, no, that, I don't uh, think they were saying that, David. No, they're just saying that times were tense back in the Civil War days, and times could be as tense in the coming two years because of gridlock in Congress, because of some policies that are going to get exacerbated that you and I don't agree with, and they're only going to get worse. No, they were just suggesting well, that we've got tense times ahead. Well, can I just point out something? There's nothing wrong with gridlock. The gridlock, especially when you have someone in like Obama whose policies are destroying this nation and everything good that it stands for, gridlock is the healthiest thing we could have, yeah. stopping him in his tracks. But we don't have to have government action for the sake of government action. And it won't be gridlock that causes any kind of strife. It will be Obama abusing the rule of law That's and his and issuing executive orders that he has no authority to issue in contravention of the Constitution and rule of law. Let's be clear of who the bad actor will be if that occurs. And Our, he's already said he would do it. That's right. All right, let's just hit one of the issues, because you wrote about it, and, and you're syndicated writers, so you're writing all the time. This happens to be on World Net Daily, and this is about a week ago, a little more than a week ago, and it has to do with the Obamacare team that came out and basically said the voters are foolish or idiots. I want to play, it's a 30-second soundbite. Let me play that soundbite, then I want to come back and I want to read two paragraphs that you wrote and then get your response. This bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Okay, so it's written to do that. In terms, of, in terms of risk-rated subsidies, if you had a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit that healthy people pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Okay? Just like the people, transparent, lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever, but basically that was really 
really critical to getting the thing to pass. Okay, he's referring to passing the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, and the stupidity of the American voter was necessary, which I would agree with that, by the way, uh, David Limbaugh. And then you write, and you have a long article, I'm reading two short paragraphs, and you write, this is the stuff of outright tyrants, arrogant, unaccountable, cavalier despots. This is political fascism. By the way, I love the way you tell it like it is. This is not representative government. This type of behavior not qualifies the Constitution and disenfranchises the American people. Obama and his team are not chastened, much less repentant, over the recent election results. They remain undeterred, and they intend to continue using whatever means they deem necessary in their self-assessed superior wisdom to accomplish their political ends beginning with immigration. Okay, that's what I meant by are we heading into some very dangerous couple of years here. You said it very appropriately. This is political fascism. You have any words of wisdom for my audience who are basically conservative Christians? Well, that we have to fight back. We can't just take this sitting down. And I know some of my fellow Christians believe that that we have to just pray and, and not engage. I don't think we've exhausted our duties to our children, to our culture, to our society by sitting on our hands and, and leaving it all to God. I think we, of course, God is the ultimate authority and His sovereignty rules, but we have a duty to engage in the culture. God acts through human beings, and we are human beings, and we're trying to be obedient to Him, and we have to engage in the culture. If we don't, the things that we believe in will be put on the, uh, will be subordinated as they are. This idea that Obama and his minions deliberately fooled, deliberately misrepresented the facts about whether we could keep our plans and all that, right. and, and the various other aspects and com- components of Obamacare, in order to fool the CBO to get this bill scored in a way that appeared budget neutral, otherwise it wouldn't have passed, is beyond outrageous. That means we have a group of people in the federal government who run our executive branch who deliberately defrauded the CBO so that they could illegally pass a bill which would affect our very freedoms and our solvency, our federal, our governmental solvency and our personal solvency. This is unbelievable what they've done, and they've admitted it among themselves on a tape that they didn't intend to be recorded. And I'm telling you, this ought to be a smoking gun yes. that objective journalists would condemn just for the process alone. But what we find is most journalists are liberals, and liberals believe in the end justifying the means. They're not about the Constitution. Right. They're not about preserving our liberties. They're about achieving their political ends by whatever means necessary, and that's what I mean by fascism, and it ought to scare the pants off, off of everyone, especially those of us who are fellow Christians, and they, it ought to ignite and encourage them into action so that we can fight against such things. The election was a great first step, but we have to keep going because liberals, progressives never stop. They're relentless.